Hello, I'm your host, Gabriela, and I'm very glad to say welcome to the very first episode of our new podcast, Teach and Talk. The creation of this podcast comes from the idea that learning English opens a lot of different doors every day, allowing people to connect and exchange knowledge and experience with each other. Also, it comes from the necessity of improving English teaching and learning. Although it can be very challenging, the process can be very reward, both to teachers and students. For our first episode, we're going to discuss teaching the four skills. To expand our point of view on the top, I'm excited to invite teacher Camila, an expert in teaching English. Camila, thank you so much for being here today. Your presence is a true honor and I'm sure our listeners are about to learn a lot from you. Thank you for having me. So, teacher, my first question to you is, what are the four English language skills? They are speaking, listening, reading and writing. Okay, so what is important to consider when teaching those skills? There are a lot of aspects that must be considered when teaching the four skills. It's important to know the student's learning profile, their age, their background, what methodology suits them better. Um, the size of the class is also very important. And activities designed for private classes may not work in a room full of students. So it's important that the teacher knows how to manage those aspects. Can you discuss a little bit more about each one of them? Um, sure. Starting with speaking, this skill refers to the learner's ability to express themselves using the English language. Um, it involves pronunciation, rhythm, flow, fluency, coherence, and a lot more. Uh, the reading skill is related to one's ability to understand and interpret what is written. Uh, a good reader has the power not only to recognize words, but also to interpret, analyze, and criticize the information that is being consumed. Listening involves the ability of understanding spoken English. And last but not least, we have writing, which focuses on the ability of organizing ideas and creating cohesive messages, paragraphs, and texts. That's very interesting. This topic is the one I'm most curious about. I would like to know more about each one of them. Is that possible? Of course. Which one would you like to start with? Could you start with the speaking? According to what I have discussed in my book called How to Teach English, there are different aspects about teaching speaking. There will be situations where students are going to express themselves in a controlled environment, using predetermined grammar structures in order to exercise. This process differs from situations where students will be using any type of language structure with the goal of accomplishing a task, and it allows the students to re rehearse real-life situations, gives feedback about the students' learning, and also promotes engagement. Great! Could you describe a good example of speaking-focused activity? Of course. Um, role plays, for example, are very effective when it comes to speaking practice. Another type of activity that I really like is called information gap. Information gap? I have no idea what this is. Can you tell me more about it? Sure. Uh, in information gap activities, the students will be given different pieces of information, and the goal is to fill in the gap between the different information they have. This allows students to engage in conversation. Would you give one example? Mm, it's possible to choose a famous person's biography and select dates related to different moments of their life. Um, the students will be divided into two groups, A and B, for example, and group, group A will only have the description of the moments, and group B will have the dates when each moment happened, and they need to talk and gather information to match each date to the moment correctly. Oh, it seems very interesting. What about listening? When teaching listening, the teacher must consider engaging themes to the students. Also, it's important to match the level of details and understanding that is going to be asked in the activities with the student's English level. What does a listening activity look like? Listening activities have a lot of possibilities and is a type of activity that requires a lot of engagement from the students. 
Um, also in my book, I discuss some principles that I consider very important for a teacher to know when preparing listening activities. One example of activity that I really like is using images associated with the conversations the students are going to listen to. This really, really helps them to understand what they're listening to. I'm very curious about those principles. I will surely read it. Could you talk a little about teaching reading? Reading is an amazing skill because it can even help to develop another skill, which is writing. When students get in touch with different types of texts, their writing will also improve. One very good advice that I can give teachers related to teaching English is to pay attention to the selection of material. Authentic materials need to relate to the student's reality of proficiency and also age. Would you describe an example of reading activity, please? Reading activities need preparation beforehand. The reading topic needs to be introduced to the students. This will make the process easier for them. A brief conversation moment can be a good warm-up for a reading activity. To follow up with the reading, many different activities can be done, such as interpretation questionnaires or writing productions. I see. And last but not least, what about writing? I think that teaching writing is very important because it promotes reinforcement, language development, and so much more. When teaching writing, just like the other skills, it is important to consider the student's age and level of proficiency. Another thing that is good to consider is the student's interests because it will be easier to engage them in writing about things they enjoy. Great! And about writing activity, can you give us an example? Writing activities can be performed in many ways. One that I describe in my book is related to choosing a specific kind of writing, for example, a letter, a birthday card, or an email, because giving examples is very important in this context. Is it possible to integrate these skills? Yes, of course. As I mentioned before, reading can help in the development of writing skills, for example. Speaking can be used as preparation for listening activities and much more. So, teacher Camila, again, thank you so much for joining me on the first episode of the podcast. I'm sure our listeners will enjoy this episode and all the information shared. Thank you, Gabriela. It was a pleasure and I had a great time. Thank you, our dear listeners, for your time and stay tuned for the next episode of Teaching and Talk.